Today, I'm going to tell you three harsh realities about becoming a marketing data analyst. Keep in mind, this is a different job, although it's very related to a data analyst. This is a specific niche type of a data analyst. And you may think that the job requires a lot of numbers and programming, and it does have some of that, but it also has a lot more to do with strategy and marketing tools and understanding online marketing, and it isn't as programming as heavy as you think. Now, in this video, you're going to learn a lot about these three harsh realities of being a marketing data analyst and figure out if this is the job for you and learn specific skills that you need and you'll learn resources on how to obtain these skills. And by the end of this video, you'll be able to be in a much better place of understanding what you need to do to get a job in this field. So without further ado, let's get started right away. So the first harsh reality is that it is not a skill set that is all about numbers and being in a silo or island where you're just playing with numbers and doing data and programming all day. In fact, in reality, this is a job that requires a decent amount of social skills, communication, presentation, and strategy skills. So yeah, I would say a decent chunk of it is where you're on your own, working on the data, setting it up, setting up tracking, pulling that into a dashboard, pulling multiple data sources in a dashboard, and all of that where you're on your own. Uh, but it's not all of the job. And, you know, it varies depending on the company you work for, but a rough measure is 25% is where you are communicating with leadership, with a team, and really trying to present your results. Because there's a difference between what you do, who you are, and the actual deliverable, and then perception. So if you don't, if not good at building a good perception that what you're doing is valuable and impactful and presenting in a way that's digestible, easy to understand, you're going to have a hard time. And I've learned this the hard way where just presenting the numbers, especially if you present something really overwhelming to them, like a table or spreadsheet just full of numbers, they're going to get confused. They're going to start to question your value. So really training that skill is really impactful. Now, my favorite YouTuber and resource, he also sells coaches on this. And like this is literally like the thesis of what he's selling. Uh, his name is Vin Gang, and he has like millions of subscribers on YouTube and, and TikTok, but he teaches communication skills. And his whole premise is that like you could be a 10 out of 10 at your technical skills, but if you're a 2 out of 10 in your communication skills, people are going to judge you based off your communication skills. So he's a very gifted and skilled orator, and I highly recommend checking out his free or paid content if you want to kind of improve in that area. But it's really important I've done a lot of practice, read a lot of books, and still have a long way to go. Even this YouTube video is a form of practice in communicating succinctly without stuttering, without rambling, and hitting the point home. So the next big point, the second harsh truth that you have to realize is that when it comes to uh, doing and getting a job in this field as a marketing data analyst, you can't finagle your way out of having certain technical skills. So what I mean by that is some people sometimes think for some reason that they can just not have certain experience and skills in certain crucial uh, technical skills for this job. And some of them even believe that they can, even, even once they get the job, they can just kind of like get around ever learning these skills and succeed at their job and keep their job. And no amount of networking or whatnot is going to overcome that. Now, networking can help you stand out and be at the top of the resume pile once you have the skills to back it up. But I think it's just um, too high a percentage of people think that they can finagle the, their way around it. Certain key technical skills, and I'll, I'll get to what those are, but certain technical skills, if you don't have them, what do you expect? Like they put them on the job posting for a reason. It's not like they're like, oh, let me just throw some random stuff on there. They're actually looking for these skills because if you can't deliver 
when you're you know working the job then they're like uh, this guy can't deliver like how how are we going to get this done and uh, at least for my job the biggest goal is often to essentially map out and analyze data and so you're pulling from multiple data sources google analytics google tag manager which is used to set up custom tracking um, or some alternative to those web analytics and tag management tools as well as various ad advertising platforms or social media and elsewhere so if you have no idea how to set up tracking for that and do that that is going to be a huge issue so for me i found like some of the biggest most common things uh, they look for are some basic level of you know SQL programming, which by the way you can learn from A to Z for like less than fifty bucks off a Udemy course or CodeAcademy.com. And then another skill that they look for is Google Tag Manager, which by the way they teach for free uh, on MeasureSchool.com and AnalyticsMania.com. And they also have paid courses, but uh, for me I've been able to learn it A to Z just through their free material on those websites. Um, and they also have a YouTube channels, which you can check out too, which, you know, teach it from A to Z. So that's how I was able to learn it. And so, so these are some things, um, and then there's web analytics tools, but those are fairly easy to learn just by going, like installing the tool yourself, going through every piece of the tool. And then oftentimes these uh, web analytics tools, whether it's Amplitude, Mixpanel, or Google Analytics, they often have... Uh, websites with free tutorials and resources. So yeah, sometimes you can't be scared of paying for something as well because that's oftentimes the much faster way of learning it. Uh, however, it's easily uh, something you can do. So I don't understand why people don't. I think sometimes they're just overwhelmed. It's too technical and then they just don't even try. But I think that's a huge mistake. Stop trying to fake it. Just like learn the tool. It's, it's possible. And another hack to doing so is just like get an internship, join an agency, work for an agency at an entry-level job for a few years. And that's another thing I did. And you just learn so much working for clients and you learn these tools as well. So you're almost getting paid to learn these tools. So that's enough on that. Let me get to the third um, uncomfortable truth you can say. And that one is you have to be proactive. You have to develop extreme ownership and you have to do what you need to do to essentially learn the skills, the tools that you need to. And not just t technical skills like tools and skills, but also be proactive in doing what you need to do to make sure that whoever you're delivering your reports to are happy and satisfied. If there's a knowledge gap uh, that you don't have and or there's some misunderstanding or lack of clarity, everything is on you. You have to figure out what you need to do ahead of time to make sure you're aligned, to make sure you understand this person's goals, this leader's goals, and then map it out and then keep in constant communication along the way to make sure you aren't off track while you're building the dashboards or reports or setting up some type of custom tracking. And uh, that is something that I think is a soft skill that uh, people can often improve on. This is something that I've learned, I've observed from others who work similar jobs. Um, and yeah, it's, I think it's a key part. Now I currently work as a marketing data analyst for an agency, which makes it even more important because agency life is much busier. It's more hectic. It's oftentimes a bit more stressful and you have multiple clients you're juggling. So you really have to be on top of it to figure things out because everyone else is already working. They have stuff on their plate, so they may forget something. So I'm often in Slack channels, which is the, you know, very popular internal communication channel that people use and I'm being proactive. I'm, I'm saying stuff like, uh, Hey, just want to double check. This is what you want when you set up tracking, right? Or, Hey, I found this thing. I want to make sure we're aligned on it or, Hey, these are the goals you want, right? I just want to check in on that. Things like that here and there, just make sure, um, there's no misunderstandings because people can, uh, be just, they can, they can be led astray because they're just so busy all the time that you end up delivering something that's not what they want. Or if you have suggestions or ideas, or if you don't want to make, make sure the ball is not dropped when someone's giving you access to a tool or um, you just need something from them, you have to be proactive because they have all these things going on already. So they're already busy. So they're going to forget sometimes. And that's okay if they forget. So 
Uh, Extreme Ownership is actually another book. Um, I recommend it. It's by Jocko Willick. And it talks about, you know, just having ownership of your life, not blaming others, and uh, how he used that as a, a decorated Navy SEAL to succeed uh, when he was, you know, fighting abroad in the Middle East. So very famous and respected book that is often used in uh, business life. In fact, one of my executive leaders at the company I work for also highly recommends that book. So I, I recommend it as well. I think it's a great way of getting ahead. And as far as the technical skills, the same things apply. So think about it. This is a field where there's always new tools being invented. Old tools get outdated and replaced. And then artificial intelligence is constantly changing the game. So you have to constantly be proactive and keep learning new tools, new web analytics tools, new uh, tag management tools. And I do that all the time. So you can't just stay stagnant. Right now, um, I, I think in just the last year or so, Google Analytics 3 was replaced with Google Analytics 4, which is a completely new system with a completely different philosophy that I had to learn, that I had to go through a certification for. Tableau is making waves as a data visualization tool. So that's another thing that I went through a whole uh, training and certification to get uh, certified and pass the exam for. And that exam was no joke. And I had to do some of that learning and research on my own free time outside of work to get ahead of this tool. And the exam was no joke. They literally had a live camera going at you uh, for like the two hours that the exam took place to make sure you weren't cheating. And there's all sorts of really hard questions thrown at you during the exam. And so it was not one of these, you know, quick quiz exams. And the questions are not something like they even freeze out your whole computer so that you can't like check go on Google and search up the answers. Like you're, you're, they had, they installed this software where you just, your computer's locked on the uh, exam quiz questions. So there's a lot of work that you have to do behind the scenes to get the skills you need, but it is worth it. So thanks for watching. Like, and subscribe if you like this type of video. And I'll see you in the next video where you'll learn more about how to be a marketing data, data analyst. Join my free email newsletter for exclusive tips. Link is in the description.